Okay guys, today I'm gonna to show you how I detail from beginning to end. I'm gonna show you how you're gonna be able to do this and get it looking brand new again. This vehicle is a Chevy Impala. I love doing Impalas. They have great carpet. There's a good pile on it. I do wanna work on this detail like a typical uh, vehicle owner would do as most people watching this videos probably don't feel comfortable removing seats like this. Impalas are a little more difficult to remove. They don't have bolts in the front. The Chevys on the Impalas and Malibus don't put bolts in the front. There's two in the rear that you remove. Then you gotta tilt the seat up just right. There's two little claw-like hooks underneath in this area that lock down into the frame. And you gotta lift it up just right. They're kind of a pain in the ass to remove. But I'm gonna show you how I clean this vehicle from top to bottom. The first thing you're gonna need is a vacuum. I've got myself a shop vac. You may have something a little smaller. Any vacuum will do. Uh, you will want some attachments if you do have them. I've got this one for the trim. I've got the regular large nozzle I'll use. And then I have this crevice tool. This. Um, I know not everybody might have this one, but it's really, really handy when you're getting in between the seats especially and under, especially since I'm not going to remove these. I've also got a pet hair removal tool. It doesn't look like I have any pet hair in this vehicle, so I might not be using that. Um, oh, we'll also want some rubber gloves, especially when I'm using a lot of these chemicals. The first thing we'll be doing is, uh, after the vacuum, is working on the seats and carpet. So I've got three chemicals in a row here that I'm going to use. I've got PNS Terminator. Uh, this is an enzyme spot and stain removal tool, uh, chemical that we do have some staining on the seats that I'm going to want to use this on. The carpet bomber is the general cleaner uh, of the carpet and upholstery. You can see this says step two. The enzyme cleaner is step one. Uh, once I've used those two, uh, then I'll use this step three, the finisher, which is going to neutralize these first two chemicals. Now, the nice thing about this series by P&S, you can see it's their double black series, their Rennie Doyle collection, is you don't need any special tools for this. You can just use these three chemicals and you're going to be able to get uh, professional results with your seats without any uh, special tool, which I will be using my... This is my Bissell Spot Clean Pro Extractor. It's not a big uh, piece of machinery. I believe this one costs about $170 when I purchased it. Then I move on to cleaning the trim. And here's one of my favorite chemicals, uh, another PNS product, PNS uh, Express Interior Cleaner. Uh, with that, I'm going to use this uh, new uh, Scrub Ninja that I have. I had the Star Scrubbers and I just purchased, picked up this new Star Scrubber and a couple of detail brushes, along with a bunch of microfiber towels that you're gonna to need to wipe up all of the filthy solution after it is cleaned. I've also got, um, and you might not have these, these aren't necessary. I do have a lot of different size cotton swabs to kind of reach into some of those tight areas, and especially, um, especially the air vents. Uh, they're really hard to get into. Got some larger ones here for that, depending on the size of the air vents, but you can really get everything uh, picked up uh, from those tight areas with that. Uh, another tool that I'll use when I'm cleaning this that isn't necessarily required, but it's nice to have, is my McCulloch steamer. This allows me to blow out those trim lines, the, the tight areas that my detail brush and the microfibers just can't reach. But this is a very handy tool. Again, not very expensive. I think I bought this for $170, $160, something like that. Um, I do have all this stuff linked in the description below if you're interested in purchasing any of this. So you can just watch and see how I get this done and then check those out later. Once I've got everything cleaned up, the finishing stages are some 303 Aerospace Protectant and a microfiber applicator that I use here. Yeah, this one looks like... I could probably get a new one broken out at some point, but I like to use these things down until really there's nothing left of them. And then the final step is to clean the glass. I'm using some Sprayway glass cleaner on this vehicle. I've used some other ones before, but I do like this one. Um, you need a microfiber for that. I do have a special one here. These are general purpose microfibers that I bought at Costco. They're the Kirkland brand for interior applications. I do like these since they are inexpensive. The only problem these things I hate is they have tags on them and you got to sit and tear the tags off each one and make sure there's no um, nothing sharp left on the tag. Uh, this is a rag company edgeless 
towel that I prefer for the windows uh, just because it has a little shorter uh, fiber here and it doesn't leave anything behind and it, it leaves these windows streak free. Here's a tool that I use to reach uh, up inside of the uh, windshield on the interior. But these are all the different tools that I'm gonna use today to get this vehicle looking like new. All right, one thing I notice as I look a little closer, I get a little brighter light here. You'll see where the problem might be. This is why I do like removing the seats from vehicles. You can see something got spilled. That's gonna be a pain to clean up. Um, but with the extractor, even without the extractor, if I just spray that with my chemicals, let it soak, let it kind of absorb, I'm guaranteeing somebody spilled coffee. And you probably noticed that's not OEM. Somebody attached extra coffee holders here um, they must not have liked the stock version with this and they attached this piece because I can still get this gear shifter cleaned up really nice without removing that so I've got the passenger side vacuumed up here you notice with that small attachment I was able to really get into all the tight areas under the seat really well Well, moving into the back area, you can see that eh, something was spilled. I'm, it's got to be coffee, and it spilled a lot. And you can see there was one spot under the seat right there. I can spot treat that. Otherwise, actually, under the seat looks clean. Okay, let's give it a little closer inspection now that I've got it vacuumed. I know it's a brighter light, but I just want to be able to see. This will really show off any stains. Looks like uh, we have a spill over here, kind of a typical area. Again, that's why I like to remove seats, but I got to upcharge for that. I just can't physically remove them constantly anymore. Um, looks like the rest of the front well isn't too bad. I do know right where that bright light is behind the e-brake there, that little dead pedal area. Um, that's always a nasty area for salt and sand in this part of the U.S. in Minnesota. We get a lot of winter grime in there. Okay, I've got everything I need to begin extraction. I've got Terminator I'm going to use. Here's my carpet bomber. I dilute it down a little bit. Uh, the other bottle's one-to-one, -one, more for real intense staining, which I might use in here a little bit. Got my drill brush attached and my extractor ready to go here. Using Terminator first, just a real light coating of this. And this is designed to break down those body oils since it's a, an enzyme remover. All right, that was the carpet bomber I just sprayed on. I gotta let that sit for a couple of minutes. Uh, then I'm gonna use my steamer here once it's fully heated up. Then I gotta let it sit for a couple of minutes, let the chemicals do its work. Uh, one mistake that I used to make when I first started doing this was I'd spray the chemical on, I'd agitate it and extract right away. I didn't let the chemicals do their work. I gotta give them a couple of minutes to do the job that they need to do.
All right, so I got the seed extracted. There were a couple of spots, you know, right here. I was able to get much better, these two much better. It's looking a lot better, but we had a little problem. Um, uh, somebody had told me this does happen with these machines, and it has now happened to me. I have snapped off the extractor head, and it is... I thought, oh, I'm gonna be able to repair this. No problem because, well, I repaired it part earlier on it. But it looks like if this is gonna be a rough repair. Got some super glue, some of this really heavy tape that I had used for the previous repair. And it seems to be holding pretty steady. I just gotta make sure that when I extract, I hold on to this end and just use it to suck the fluids out and hopefully it works well enough for today. It looks like I'm going to have to either buy another one of these Bissells or upgrade to the Mighty. All right, I have the front seat I got to work on. You can see there's a lot of staining. This one, even looking to the naked eye, you can see there's coffee. I can see there's coffee up there. All right, it's been sitting a while. You can see all the wicking that's happened. Let's see what I can suck out on this first attempt, first pass. Okay, about an hour later, I've got this seat about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. Um, there might be some wicking, there might be some spotting I have to, uh, treatment I have to do later. Right now I'm just drying up as best I can before I apply the finisher. And then we'll get back. I got the floor mats ready to go to, to extract. And then... Even though it's got all weather floor mats, the other ones were underneath. And then I'll start hitting trim that's pretty dirty. And we're getting on the home stretch here of this detail. All right, so I've been drying this for about an hour and a half. And you can see we're gonna have to redo this seat. The wicking was just terrible. It's pretty much dry now to the touch, but it's gonna have to get hit again. I'm gonna move on though while I start kind of doing double duty doing this and also working on the trim uh, on the door panels at the same time i've got my setup here that i use i use my little uh, detailing cart microfibers detailing pad uh, detail brush and then the express cleaner and i've got the steamer right there warming up almost ready to go to help me attack all of this trim get everything looking as close as possible to new. This Express has a very nice, pleasant, uh, fruity scent to it, about, kind of a tropical fruit. And you can see how this Scrub Ninja pad works spectacularly on trim, better than the star scrapers that I have from them. I take my detail brush with some product and then just hit these tighter areas that it doesn't 
the lines and then A lot of times I'll just spray it right on the pad instead of onto the trim. Sometimes it gets all, you get over spray and it gets everywhere. But it really, really, really does a nice job. I always even try to clean up the glove box. You don't have to really scrub. This is more dust. So I just try to wipe this out really nice you can tell that this person has driven on gravel a lot because there's dust that gets everywhere uh, just all over that dust will find its way inside anything one thing you have to really be aware of when working on an older vehicle this thing is an 06 so 18 years old is you're gonna think that this is all dirt buildup on here. And there is some dirt buildup, but you can also see the dye is starting to come out of this vinyl. So I'll use the Scrub Ninja very lightly to go over this. And I'll show you the microfiber. It'll be really dirty afterwards, but there's only so much you can take off on this or otherwise you're gonna be, it's you're, the law of declining returns. You're just gonna be pulling more of the dye out than you are of dirt and it's gonna look even worse when you're done. So just go very gently on the steering wheel, just gentle. I'm not rubbing, I'm not putting much pressure, I'm just letting the microfiber pad, that's kind of what this is. You can even use the other side that's a little bit gentler even. But again, not a lot of pressure. Just light pressure all the way around. You can see there's a lot of dirt on that, but I gotta be very careful how much I'm willing to push this to take the dirt away without damaging what's left. See, it still looks dirty. The question becomes, how much of this is actually dirt and oils and how much is dye from the vinyl that's coming off. You, yeah, see it's, every time I just scratch a little bit, you're seeing the vinyl, you know, the, the vinyl comes up. So I think we're kind of stuck where we're at with this. There's, it's just gonna have that discoloration from now on. Okay, we're starting to get down towards the end of the detail. You can see the table. All the things I've used, I've put away as I've used them. I've got my 303 Aerospace left and my glass cleaner. So I'm gonna use my microfiber and 303 and we're gonna get this trim treated up looking spectacular. All right, we're back the second day after a night of fully drying. It does look like I need to hit this area just a little bit more. The top there looks a lot better. Still a little bit of browning right there from that coffee stain. Some of this is the way that the fabric lays and some of it's just these coffee stains have been there for so long that I'm, you know, this light colored fabric, maybe they're not gonna completely come out. I mean older vehicle that coffee stain could have been there for quite some time. Certain things in vehicles that you just aren't gonna be able to bring back to fully new.
All right, just got the windows done, got this vehicle wrapped up. There's a couple of things I have to finish up. I gotta do once over vacuum, make sure everything is looking uh, spectacular. The seats, you'll see in the after shots, the seats came out really good, not perfect with those coffee stains on that light colored fabric. It wasn't gonna last forever. It wasn't gonna be exactly perfect, but looks spectacular. The owner's gonna love it. If you enjoyed the video, go on down, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna try some new videos like this, some different ones where it's instead of just the straight detail, I'm gonna do some explaining, some how-tos, maybe even some product reviews, just to mix things up a little bit, try to attract a little bit larger audience. Uh, I know some of you really enjoy the detailing videos, so those won't completely go away. I'll keep doing them. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, keep it clean.